Hey everyone, and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Dark, Season 1, Episode 3. It is called Past and Present. Full spoilers for the episode, as always. So, I think I actually said last episode that we'd be getting like a full episode with Mikkel in yeah. 86 at some point. It may not be the next one, but it'll be happening. I should have just said that. I should have stuck to my gun and said, no, it'll be the next one. God damn it. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Although it wasn't all Mikkel. Of course, we actually get the full kind of ensemble again just kind of a, so it's now all the people who were grandparents in the previous episodes are now parent aged and all the parents from the previous episodes are all teenagers and all the kids are just not born uh this this is confusing and we have a new like, obviously generation of the new sort of grand age yes it's not level. it's not confusing to watch it's just when you try and think about it and go through it well yes because right before we started this we tried to like get all the names straight because annoyingly the one sort of set of names that we hadn't really done with the grandparents age range because we'd done the kids and we'd done the parents but we were really struggling with like for example Ennis who is uh, Jonas's grandmother uh, Michael who killed himself hurt his mother like we get this reveal of her and I'm like okay Ennis, right, that's supposed to mean something to me, but I've not really learned everyone's name yet, so I'm not entirely sure who that is. I think maybe it's fair to say that this is a fault of having this so early, you know, this full episode in in 86, is that we haven't had time to learn everyone's name yet. I think that's fair. I also think it's not a huge deal if you don't get it right away, because by the end of the episode, it actually shows them side by side with the present day version. And I like that not only does it show you with her present day version, it shows you her holding the letter, and it's like, no, she's that grandma because she read that letter. She was the one who read that in episode one. Like, it really makes it very clear by the end who who is who. Uh, It's just, uh, like, we were joking back in episode one that this had, like, a Twin Peaks sized cast where all the characters intermingled and was this web of characters. Episode 3, going 30 years before, and having now an entirely new generation where it's all different actors playing the same characters and a new set of characters on top of them who are older. Oh my god, it was... The the web is now three-dimensional. It's a hyperweb. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like, like, like Connor said, it's fine when you're watching. I didn't feel confused as I was watching, but see, trying to talk about this and like getting think, all the I names think, right... I think I've made it worse for myself. Like, I, I don't even... Like, we're, we're going to have a tough time with this. We might have to be more descriptive than we are with character names with this one, because honestly, this is the... This is this is the most difficult... And cause sometimes we'll struggle if there's a big cast, we have a lot of names to learn, it'll take us maybe a few episodes to get comfortable with all the names, and maybe they like, we'll get used to, like, 90% of them, but, but, but one or two weird names that we just, for some reason, don't remember for a long time. This is easily the most difficult show for remembering names that we've ever watched. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying it now. Up, up till this point, Twin Peaks held that record. Yeah, no, nah, Twin Peaks just got obliterated. This is this is it, blown Twin out Peaks of the water. seems easy after this. <laughs> okay, okay. So, should we talk about the actual episode? Yeah, let's talk about the episode. Let's talk about let's talk about Mikkel's first because we sort of go with him there. Yeah, he's the introduction to the episode. Yeah, and we start where we left off with him, where he's outside his his, his house from you know. He's, he's soon to be house, but <laughs> he's not born yet. Uh, and obviously, he's seen the newspaper, but he's still not necessarily ready to believe that he's actually travelled in time. Like, he's kind of like doubting it, and he, he goes in asking where his parents are. And what I thought was, that actually, when I realised that the, the, the mother was like still distraught because Mads has just went missing, mm-hmm. Ulrich's brother, uh, I thought, oh, maybe she'll think it's him, because they'll look, he'll look maybe similar, because they're, you know, he's the same family. Yeah. Same age, give or take. Uh, but she's just like, oh, who are you? Like, do you know who where Mads is? Do you, where's Mads? Is he coming home soon? And she just kind of freaks out. Uh, and then he goes to the school to like see because he, he knows his mom is the, the the principal, which leads to some humour because the because <laughs> Charlotte was in. I get the right name, Katharina, not Charlotte. Yeah. Charlotte, someone else. Katharina. I told you, I'm already messing up because there's too many names. Now, now you're messing up the easy ones that you had locked down. I'm doubting myself. Yeah, so Katharina, though, like, she's, like, you know, a, a high school student here, and she's, like, like your mum's the principal? You mean Mr. whatever his name is? I'm not even going to... No, I'm not even trying to remember his name. Uh, he's a throw, throwaway line. Uh, but she's, like, oh, I don't get him. And, she, you know, she, 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 she makes a, a slur about him. She's, like, being, like, a really nasty person. It's completely different. You know, she's a kid versus like, the more mature adult that she is in yeah. present day. Uh, and my camera's not focusing. And... It will pop into focus at any <laughs> point. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so, he's, he's kind of freaking out. He, they kind of make fun of him a little bit, and he, he wanders off, and he, he actually... clearly didn't believe the paper that he read at the end of last episode. No, but, I mean, p- people can collect old papers. It's not... They can, but... Again, how easy do you think it would be to believe you actually time-travelled? 
No, no, it wouldn't. But I'd be questioning something's going on if, if I'm going, hey, you're saying you're Ulrich, and then that's supposed to be my dad, and then, you know, this isn't my house, clearly, because my key's not working, and, and my family's not here, as well, as far as he knows. And this paper says the wrong date. There's, there's enough things there that be going, this is wrong. Oh, I think he knows it's wrong, but I think he's too confused. To, that, that's why he, he tries every avenue. Okay, house isn't working. I'll try. I'll try uh, my, where my mother works. That doesn't work. I'll try where my father works. He goes to the police station, and even yeah. if his father's not there, the police station's probably the next place he'd want to go anyway. <laughs> like uh, that is true. I need help. I need help. Yeah. So he, he goes to he goes to the police station, and we meet. <laughs> we meet the the father uh, of of uh, Regina. Gene. From present day, Regina, of course, the one who owns a hotel, uh, and I, I think we'll start using the family names to sort of like just put them into sections because it just makes it easier. So he's from the the Tiedemann family, right? That's the family that Regina's in, and he's the her father. Uh, and we find out obviously in the same episode that his wife, listen, I'm assuming it's his wife. Uh, I, I have no yeah. reason to assume otherwise. She is actually going to work at the nuclear power plant. Uh, in fact, arguably she was already working there. She's just getting a promotion. But yeah, first uh, day in the new position. Though, yeah, by the look of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's all she's all kind of nervous. She's she's angry at Regina, who's a teenager, and obviously hearing like, oh yeah, you're you're a mess. You're like a a wet rag. You're a disgrace yeah. to the family. So yeah, Pretty much. It, it's like comb your hair. So so Mikel's at the police station, and he, he's with him, uh, whose name just keep me Egon. That was a good name. I like That's it. a good name. Uh, Egon Tiedemann. He so he he tries to and he's like, and he's like oh I'm looking for my father I'm looking for Ulrich Ulrich Nielsen Nielsen family and he uh, he's like wait the Ulrich Nielsen did he do this too because he's got he's got some cuts and scrapes from his his, his I've journey. Just, sorry, I've just read the wiki page. He's actually Regina's grandfather. Okay, so that that's uh, it's not it's not husband wife it's dad and daughter. Okay, yeah, right. Do you see why this is confusing people? Because it's not even like <laughs> so many connections. This is the thing. Like we never actually see them interact with each other, which is I think that would have made it clear had we seen yeah. Egon and uh, Regina's mother interact. We'd have got immediately. Okay, fine. Like their their father daughter, but we didn't. <laughs> so yes. a lot of a lot of connecting. Uh, which again, it's fine in the show. It's just when you actually try to talk about it, there's just so it, many people. Yeah, it wasn't a problem when I was watching. It was really going in easily. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed this episode. I think I should put this out here now before we. Oh, I liked it as well. Yeah, because we're obviously saying there's a lot that we're struggling now. While I was watching, no problem. Really good episode. Mm. Mm. Just, just a bitch trying to talk about it with all these names. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So he tries to. He goes back to see Ulrich, and he has a bit of a confrontation with him. Ulrich being a bit of a, a layabout, who's got his music on loud. He's playing video games. Of course, it's nineteen eighty six, so he's playing like a really crappy old, old computer game. Yeah, music's good though. Yeah, I was expecting a, a an early Nintendo game or maybe an Atari, but he was actually playing something on the uh, on the computer he had. So I'm not, I'm not really sure what format yeah. it was in. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not that old. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, sli- slightly beyond us. Yeah. Uh, and for anyone who watched this and did uh, get what that game was, I'm sorry, I just made you feel old. But, yeah. you know. but go ahead and tell us what it was. Yeah. And I'm nearly 30, so just let it sink in how old you are if you got that. Uh, <laughs> which actually reminds me, talking about things from the past, uh, there was an advert on TV, and we saw one of these actually in the first episode. But I think it's the German version of a Twix because it was the same sort of colours and the wrapper was like similar. Yeah. And they look like Twixies, but it just it was called something different. I can't even remember what the name was. No, but... I haven't had a Twix in years, and they're amazing. They're okay. Bit bit boring. I, th- I think they're the 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 they're classics. They're just dependable. Do you know? I got really disappointed once because I found out that the peanut butter Twix existed, and I was really excited. But then I found out it didn't replace the biscuit with peanut butter, so it was biscuit, it was caramel and peanut butter. It was just the biscuit and peanut butter, and it was really boring. And I was like, "This is." Uh... Why would you want to replace the biscuit with peanut butter? The biscuit's the best part. Oh, like, no, with, it's with, not. You need the biscuit to crunch. To you, you want to replace the caramel with the peanut butter. Oh, ideally, no. you want the you want peanut butter and caramel. You yeah, that's what butter. I wanted. I wanted peanut but, butter and caramel. Well, I don't mind repl- if, if you've got to replace something. You replace the caramel, not the biscuit. I don't mind the biscuit being there, but I wanted peanut butter and caramel. That was the appeal, and then it was just really boring and didn't have the same thing for it. It was weird. Anyway, so, so it's 1986. I think 
I like how they actually tackle the time period. I like that it... Obviously, you've got 80s clothes and cars and stuff, but it doesn't feel like they're going super, like... They're not doing anything outlandish with it. You have, yeah. like, maybe one scene, you know, when, when he first arrives at the school and you see, like, the bikes and the shoes. And it's like, yeah, yeah okay, it's the 80s. But when it was just, like, the... You know, when it, when it was Egon driving around doing police work and stuff, he's got the older car, but it didn't really feel like there was anything different about it. it but it was obviously the little things that they didn't do that maybe told you more. Like, at no point does anyone pull out a phone, for example, when they're outside. Things like that. Just simple little things where it just... It's part of the time period and it, it works. So I really like that. I like to feel like the same town still. Yeah. Lucky lucky Mikel doesn't have a phone, right? If he pulls that out, it's going to be weird. I mean, I say yeah. that. I'm assuming he doesn't have a phone because he's you know younger and you know, he yeah, doesn't have one yet. I think he's young enough that he wouldn't have one. Just about. Yeah. Just about in that plausible I mean, realm. I mean, it, I mean, it varies from parent to parent. You know what age kids get phones now. I mean, I, I never had a phone when I was a kid because I didn't really care. I didn't want one. But that, I, that was at a time when mobile phones were just becoming like a big thing that everyone had. Whereas yeah, now it's I, like, yeah, I, I don't think I got one till I was off to when you know when you when you start making your own way to school. Yeah, and I was like right here, have a phone so in case you know bus doesn't show up, whatever. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, and I got a car ride in school, so it wasn't really till uh, even later I was kind of like in yeah. need of that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I, I got one for well, by the time I left school, but like I was, again, like some people were obsessed with phones and wanted them at like twelve, whereas I was like, ah, eh, oh, 17, fine, give me one. So for, for for the use of it, not because I actually cared that I wanted yeah. a phone. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it, it's why we, uh, this is a, he's got to be about what eleven to thirteen, give or take. I can buy either way if Mikhail. they tell me. Had, yeah. I don't think he's as old as 13. He doesn't seem 13 to me. He seems more like 10, 11. Okay. It's, it's fine. I'm, 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 I'm ballparking. Yeah. But it, it's it's young enough where if they tell me he has a phone, like, you know, if, if, yeah. if suddenly he pulls out a phone, I'm going to be like, all right, sure, he's got a phone. But if not, I'll go, well, yeah, okay. Of course he doesn't. Yeah, maybe that ha- maybe he'll do that, use that to prove it at some point. Because obviously no one's going to believe him. Yeah, exactly. Because in this episode, he tries to tell Hannah... Uh, to you know, to <laughs> not Hannah, sorry, <laughs> not Hannah. That's Ennis. Oh, I was getting confused. Ennis, yes, Ennis, uh, Joyce's grandfather, uh, Hannah's mother. Oh, no, not Hannah's mother, sorry, it's not, it's not, it's just Hannah's husband, it's the... Hannah's mother in law, yes, Hannah's mother in law. Thank you. She, he tries to tell her because she's a nurse, he's at the hospital again, he's cut scene too, and she doesn't, she's a little book that's it's a comic book that says like future something on it, and she's just like, oh, being a kid, you know. <laughs> reading these stories uh, but she kind of the interesting thing she said though uh, when she's introduced she says she doesn't have a family yeah that is interesting I, I did note that that was a very interesting little tidbit uh, now that could just be a case of when like Jonas is adopted like maybe she met her husband and then they adopted him when he was already Michael Michael Oh yeah, right. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting it's a different generation. I'm thinking it's the, the parents yeah, and the grandparents. I, I, I know, I know. Oh my god, this is so hard. I apologise, people. <laughs> this is a shambles. The, 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 this, this we, is... we are going to do better for next episode. I'm going to, I'm going to draw a family tree. I need a tree. That might help you get your your head around it a bit yeah. better. I, I need a tree of in front of me that I can look at. There's, there's so many names to to juggle, but yeah. So she doesn't have. Uh, a family apparently here because like, yeah. that's and, why she, uh, she, she, she does a shift because oh I've, my kids need seen to can you do it since you don't have a family like, oh, it's fine I'll do it it's fine I'm like oh that's interesting because because Michael should exist by now he yeah, should course, he should be we around don't, we don't see him at all there's no reference to him well which you know makes you wonder is there timey wimey things happening has he been erased from the past does he just pop in later like yeah. do, do, does it I mean does he pop in from the future and but she, mm. at this point, let's say she believes the time travel stuff from Mikel. Yeah. And he comes in at, like, say he's like 17 when he arrives in this time period. Yeah. It's, it's and he, he explains it's, it to her and she's like, all right, okay, you, you're, you're part of my family now. Is he a kid that was saved from the future? Is he Mikel? Mikel, Michael. Ah, ah, that's not bad, actually. <laughs> I mean, is, that, is that absurd that she adopts him and changes his name to Michael? No, not at all, and that would explain why he kills himself because he's like, it's like, okay, I can't go any further. I know what's going to happen. Maybe because why he knows can... it's supposed to happen. Okay, but why can't he still live though? Like, just because well, his no, younger but... self goes to the past, that doesn't mean he has to. No, no, no. But because in the present, in 2019, 
he knows that Michael killed himself. So he's like, right, I've got to kill myself. I've got to ah. leave this letter. Yeah, and then if the yeah, and if Ennis reads the letter and she understands what he's referencing when he says, "Oh, I came from the future." Yeah. Uh, and maybe maybe even the letter. She's like, By the way, that other family over there, the Nielsen family, I'm their kid that went back in time. Yeah. Maybe. Uh huh. Maybe. Maybe I want I think you, you might be onto something with this one. Mikael Michael is. So yeah. <laughs> plausible. It's oh, the most man. plausible theory yet. Yeah, yeah, and obviously he's a bit different in age to to to, to Hannah, but not like, you know. Obviously, in a few years that won't be a difference. Like you know, once... yeah, and it's not drastic enough that it's unbelievable. It's like five, six years. So yeah, like, like, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, like once he's eighteen and she's like twenty-two, like you know, whatever. <laughs> like no one's gonna care. Uh, exactly. So no, that's interesting. And interestingly, with them as well, you see that she, her and Ulrich have a, a nice little moment, even though he's dating, he's dating uh, Charlotte. Not Charlotte, sorry. I did the same mistake Katharina uh, which is a nice little foreshadowing of the future you get the sense that they were always kind of friendly but you know did they actually have a thing in the past maybe they did maybe they didn't but maybe it was just always there so that when when Michael maybe, went it, yeah maybe they were having this affair the entire time I like to think it came out because of the grief of Michael passing I, I, I would expect so as well that's what but, I would imagine happened yeah but hey so uh, interesting so we do actually see Charlotte and I actually mean Charlotte you do this time, Young yeah. Charlotte, we actually just see... You don't even know who she is at first. She's just sort of riding her bike, and she finds a dead bird. And it kind of clicked who she probably is, because we, at the end of the last episode, Charlotte at the police station comes out, and it's all the dead birds. And it was like, oh, this means something to her, because this yeah, happened she before. she had that look of knowing yeah. what this is. Or not knowing necessary, but like of recognition. And she puts it down in her journal. She, draw, she draws a, a, a picture of it, and we see the name in the book of Charlotte, so that confirms who it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's setting up, you know, that these different things are in play for for the future uh, interesting lot of character bits Ulrich like uh, Egon doesn't think he'll ever be a he thinks it's funny that, he, that Mikkel, th Mikkel thinks he's a, a an officer because like oh, he'll never be like me he's, yeah he's, he's this little shit yeah and even when you see him he's like he's so like anti-police he's like he blames them for not finding uh, do, his do brother do you think that's presumably that's why he becomes a police officer he's like no no I want to make sure this doesn't happen to yeah he can else. do it better yeah I can, yeah like to prove them wrong I, 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 maybe it's a whole no, I'm going to become a police officer to find him myself. Yeah, I think it'll be an interesting growth for him to realise that this is this is like this. But uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was actually joking before we started that because the, 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 these all these family trees were getting so confusing that I'd make a graphic for the bottom of the screen just to show them. Yeah, but it's so much work. I'm not sure because it'll and it'll change as well. We'll get more information episode to episode that it might not be worth the the yeah, effort. Yeah, we we did a a chart once before, and it was not worth it. No, as, it, as, a, as amazing as it was for that one moment, it, it was took not a long worth time. It. Yeah, it took a long time for about fifty seconds of screen time. <laughs> uh, so, right. So, we have that. We have Charlotte. We have young Charlotte. We have the other young uh, adults in the various families. So Regina's mother, right? Regina's mother. Uh, just let me get her name. Um, Claudia. Yeah, Claudia. Regina's mother, Claudia. Worked at the plan, and she is becoming the first ever uh, female uh, director director of the plan. Right? She, she's the uh, even one of the employees on her way in. Is like, oh, I can't believe my boss is a woman. Like, you know, this is a thing. It's a big thing. She feels yeah. proud of herself. Uh, she's getting really snarky at Regina for for keeping her late and all the rest of it. And she comes in, and through this journey into her, so not only is she like a big player in this plan, which you know connects her to Regina and present day who's at the hotel, it also let's just introduce to some other characters who we kind of know from present day. Uh, for example, the person in present day, well, let me jump in here. I am Peter of the future. I'm recording this after the fact because I made such a mess at this part of the video, uh, or audio recording, describing who I was talking about that it just sounded completely wrong. I didn't think anyone was going to be able to understand me. So this is recorded after the fact and just inserted to make more sense of this. The person I'm talking about right now, uh, the person who was working outside of the plant, he's working at he's a worker at the plant. Uh, he is Peter's father. Peter, of course, is married to Charlotte in present day, and the 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 person that does this person this this father in present day is the man from the first episode who had dementia. Uh, I might repeat part of that in the original recording after this, but I was so back and forth uh, trying to figure out who that was. <laughs> Uh, that I ended up saying he was Regina's like father or something at one point. He's not. He, he is Peter's father. Peter's married to Charlotte. 
uh, and that's who had dementia and you know came in to warn everyone at the school that it's happening again in the first episode uh, so uh, now we'll jump back to the original recording so peter the therapist from present day who's married to charlotte uh, the aforementioned charlotte uh, her his his father works at the plant right works at the plant yes. has a crush on regina's mother who is the new director of the plant who is the new director of the plant Claudia, nailed her it. name is, right? There we go. We've nailed that. So, so we meet him, and he has a bit of a crush. He gives her the book. That's a, it turns out to be the book about time that we saw before, which is an interesting little touch. And he's all very kind of, he's wishing her luck. He seems very timid. Uh, and then we get inside with her, and we see she also has something of an affair, seemingly, with, uh, with Ulrich's father. So, father like son, because you know, Ulrich's obviously having an affair right now in present day. His father in 1986 seemed to be having an affair with Regina's mother, Claudia. Do you see why this is confusing people? Do you see why I'm having a hard time saying this all out loud? I, I know. I, I just try to keep up and said some of this points. It's just, oh, my God. How, I, do you know what? I'm looking at this going now and I'm going, how the hell did this make so much... I, I, I need to give this episode more credit. Because I yeah. was not confused when I was watching it. This no. we, this just flowed as an episode. No, it worked. And I thought, oh, it's a good episode. But then, now looking at this, I'm going, this did an amazing job of keeping things straight, all things given. Yeah. I, I think, obviously, as we see more episodes and we get used to the characters even more, this will become easier. But right now, like, there's so many people to keep track of and there's so many connections. And now we have connections. Because, obviously, we have all the present-day connections where, okay, so Ulrich is cheating on his wife with Hannah, who's Jonas's mother, right? So that's a connection, right? But in the past, Ulrich's father is cheating on his wife with the mother of Regina, who in present day is not related to those other characters at all. Yeah. You know, so there's now like different, there's like a different set of connections for the older generation in the flashbacks. Yeah. But they're going to play, they kind of already starting to play into the current set of generations. Oh, yeah, some of them will. Like, you know, Peter being so upset when he found out about the news of Mikkel. Maybe it's a bit more telling. Like, what does he know about the plant? Because his his grandfather started it, which is the next person we meet uh, after the, the, the after Ulrich's father, who is trying to like get a one on one with Regina's mother Claudia. He wants to get her because he's feeling lonely. He wants you know he's he's a horny horny man with a really bad looking fake mustache. That is my one complaint about the episode. His mustache looked a bit rough. It, it did, it did, yeah. But she goes into the office. It's like the, the previous director's leaving. It's the man who founded the plant. This is Peter's grandfather. So this yes. is in his family. So I think it's interesting that his son has only got like a relatively small job. Like you know, he's outside sweeping the the grounds when we meet him. He's he's doing like sort of more typical work as opposed to because you, you would think maybe he'd have his son like fast tracked and the side you know on the business side running the place or something like that. So I think there's maybe an interesting reason for that. Like you know, yeah. I mean, we know in present day, of course, that uh, he has dementia because that's uh, Charlotte's. Or sorry, Peter's father who has dementia. That's who that is yeah. in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. he's the one who he came running into the school. Yes. and was like you know, yes. I was like, oh, no, it's, it's happening. happening again. It's happening again. Yes, yeah, that's him. So, so maybe like, he always had some problems, and that's why he's doing the job. But, uh, but uh, the the question is though, did he have problems, and that's why he's at the low end of the job, or did he get the problems from working at the plant? That, was, it, a... was is it related? Of course. He's, he's an older man in 2019. It could just be something that's naturally occurring, you know, from age. Yeah, this happens. Oh, sure. But, you know, you see a power plant, you see all this other stuff going on, you start to make the assumptions. Yeah, you start, you start to think, is it, is it... Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think of a reason why... He, uh, does he just not like his son? Because like, his son a loser who's never like, been good at anything, and that's why he's just... Uh, uh, alternatively, is it just a case of, like, he really doesn't want to show favouritism? You know, the idea, like, I'm not giving you a leg up at all. You earn what oh, you... You know, he's, he's old-fashioned. I like, think no, that would make sense... journey. Well, no, I think that would make sense if he was, like, just not getting the promotion. But, you know, he's outside sweeping the grounds. That's very different to it is, everything it is. else. I feel like a father would still try and at least encourage him to, yeah. you know, no, go after Un the Unless he's jobs. just straight up not qualified to be in the plant. Yeah, possibly. It's just, it's just like, oh, I'll give him a job so that he's got an income. But that's it. It's that's, better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's the extent. I mean, maybe just be that. But, yeah, so, so you, you meet him... And he, he he's very cryptic. He's all oh you. He's in a wheelchair as well. He's already an old man, which is why we don't have a present day version of him because he's already he's already the grandparent age. Uh, which is, <laughs> yeah, that's this, how is, this is why it gets confusing because we had a set of grandparents that are now parents, but now we've got new grandparents, yes. great grandparents. Yes. 
uh, that, that, which is what, which is why I keep referring to them as the parent age, the grandparent age. It's the best way I can think of to distinguish them. G- given there's like a thirty three year gap, it's like per- it's actually very Back to the Future because that was roughly this because Back to the Future was thirty years. Yeah, uh, it's 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 pretty much okay. That's a generation, give or take. Yeah, and it's basically the it's just a few years off actually because Back to the Future was eighty five in two thousand fifteen. And this is eighty six and twenty nineteen. So, so yeah, it's pretty, not, it's not far. Yeah. yeah, pretty close in the, uh, the the timeline. Of course, this has the hindsight of actually being in twenty nineteen, more or less, when we make it, so that we're not envisioning flying cars and yeah, Jaws we're, not, 19. we're not doing stupid things, fun things, not stupid. Don't you mock Back to the Future Part Two, you ginger pube? <laughs> I only did that because I didn't know you. That was a lot of fun. Not even pubes. You're just one pube. You're one giant pube. <laughs> You're that annoying pube that's sticking out the place that's really annoying <laughs> to pull it out of. Uh. Anyway, uh, so, so yeah, he's very crazy. He's, he's giving this whole speech like, oh, you're not just running the plan, you're running the town. Everyone in the town depends on this plan. Like, this affects the whole town. And not just the employees, because that's what she's, because she's like, oh, well, there's 200 employees, so, you know, all those people have their incomes. And, like, no, 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 the whole town. The answer's the whole town. Yeah. The entire town runs because of this plan. And other things that are brought up, because Chernobyl's like fresh in everyone's minds, like no one trusts nuclear power, everyone thinks it's a disaster waiting to happen. And he's like, okay, so you have to win back that trust. Like he's, he's doing all this stuff. He doesn't seem very happy that he's leaving. It almost feels like he's been forced out of, out of the job because he's getting so old, but he doesn't actually want to like, leave. He seems like yeah. a man who's obsessed with his work, who wants to stick around. That's he does, kind of, definitely. That's what I was getting the vibe from. But he's like, oh, okay, so I have to show you some secrets because she, she notices some. Uh, she's looking through the numbers because so obviously some discrepancies. Yeah, yeah. She's the new director, so she's getting all of the private numbers, and she's like, wait a minute, this is not what we report to the the public and the press and whatever. It's like, what about this? Like, this is completely different numbers. And she's like, well, after Chernobyl, we have to keep their their optimism up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's not terrifying at all. Yeah, very sketchy. And then, then he takes her outside. Right, they go outside to this fenced off area in the back of the plant, and. Because it doesn't make it clear what they're doing at first. He hands her this, like, you know, this big flashlight, this big, you know, sort of, you know, spelunking level flashlight. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's like, on you go. And you see, like, this big hole in the ground. And it's like, oh, she's at the caves, but it's the other side of the caves. It's, the, you know, behind that door that, you yeah. know, that uh, Yulrich keeps seeing in the caves. And she's going down, and she's going down to the caves, and she's looking around, and they're like, okay, what's she going to find? Like, th- does this plant actually know about the door? Is that what this is? It just knows about the door. It turns out to be much simpler than that. It's basically where they're dumping all of the uh, the, the waste that they're yeah. not reporting. It's so just presumably barrels. that's what's causing the door. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's just the, it's just like a you know it's the entire height of the cave, just barrels and barrels and barrels of this toxic waste. Yeah. To be fair to them, I mean, even if they shipped it off, it'd just get buried somewhere else. Because all we do with nuclear waste. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Sure, sure, but then the worry is, like, does this get into like drinking supply water nearby yeah, yeah, or something? Yeah, like, you know, exactly. locations for this are picked for a reason. They're, they're they, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like middle of the desert. Okay, here we go. I mean, they tried. It was the middle of a forest. They're like, ah, it's, it's, it's all right. It's out of the way. Forest has wildlife, though. What? The forest has wildlife. Yeah, yeah, they don't give a shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why Toxic Waste and ET, the video game for Atari, gets put in the, the desert, and I'm out of focus again. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Alright. Oh, your camera hates you today. Yeah, it's really messy. It doesn't usually do this. It's, it's happened like twice in the last two years, and then somehow twice in one video. I, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so, okay, that was a very confusing mess for the first 10, 15 minutes, but I think we, we got through the, the main just... Obviously, we've got the last little bit to do still, but I'm just... In terms yeah, and of, uh, we, we've still got so, the, the sheep to talk about. The sh- oh, the sheep. Oh, how could I forget the sheep? Yeah, so much like the birds, because at first we, we were thinking it was just the birds, but it seems like it's also affecting other wildlife, at least the sheep. Yeah. And um, so all these sheep die. Exactly 33, which at first I was thinking, is that something? Uh, I, I, I still think it might be. I don't think it is. I feel like it's like... like see, see it if just there was, happened to be 33 yeah, in the see, field. Because it was all 33. Like see, see if there happened to be like like another five still alive. It's like, why not yeah, all of them? No, I'm, I'm with you. Then there'd be a reason. I feel like it's just a coincidence it's the same number. I think it's just a nice thematic point. It's like, oh, yeah. hey, look, it's 33 again. It's, that number's going to keep popping up. But yeah, so these sheep have died and the you know we have the uh, we have the autopsy about you know, uh, Egon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember that just because of Ghostbusters now. Egon uh, go, goes to the coroner and he's like looking at the sheep and it's like, yeah, this is weird. All 33 of them died of cardiac arrest. And he's like, isn't that weird? It's like, well, it's not that weird. They're, they're prone to be scared to death. Like, that's actually a sheep thing. Yeah, uh, I actually know this is a real thing. 
I've heard of it before. I mean, I've never heard of 33 of them. You know, a bit like a mass. Oh, I, I remember seeing one in the news like a, a few years ago where it was like 200 sheep died at once oh, right. because of this. It just spread over this, these fields. But that said, he 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 asked like, okay, so could one person do this? And he's like, nah, not really. Not unless he's Freddy Krueger, which I enjoyed that because re- that's like such a contemporary reference at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost thought Egon was going to look at him and go, who? <laughs> you know, like he'd be out of touch because he's the, the the older generation. No, nah, because I think by that point, only the first, maybe the first three movies had been out. Maybe only two. Because yeah. uh, one was 84, two was 85, and don't know if three made it in 86. Three might have been 87. It's hard to tell mm. from memory, but... Uh, but no, no, nice little touch. I like, I, I like the references to stuff. Um, just like, can I just say how weird it is that Netflix now has three shows that I love that all are all 80s themed in some way? This, Stranger Things, and... Glow. Goes the other one. Super 80s. I forgot about Glow because I don't watch it. I know. But I just think it's funny. That yeah. It, yeah, yeah, it is. There's so many 80s shows on... Uh, I mean, this one's well, like half They know half. people like the 80s. People do like the 80s. It's, it's, it's very f- I think people of our generation are very fond of the 80s because we grew up in all the movies, so we have this nostalgia attached to how how things were, at least in the at least, at least in the media, like how things actually were in real life. Who knows? I don't know, I don't know about any of that. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's not the point. The point is, how does it look on TV? Exactly. So, um, but the other thing with the sheep is that the eardrums are ruptured, which yeah. is very interesting because that's what's happening to the kids when the uh, the the hooded man is is putting them in the chair. And yeah. Uh, also, uh, I have a, another theory. So you know, you mentioned how you thought it was to do with magnetism last episode because oh, of the sure. birds. Yeah. I think it's just the eardrums are being ruptured. We know, you know, because you know, oh, balance yeah. is in the ears. They just lose their balance and just fall. Uh, question: Do birds and sheep have better hearing than humans do? I have no idea. I'm asking that because I'm think. I, su- I suppose the dogs would be the first to go then if this was the case. But you know, just the idea that like the frequency or whatever is only affecting certain uh, species yeah, yeah, because of be. the, because of our ears. But uh, again, dogs would be going first if it was. Maybe it's yeah, worse yeah. hearing. Maybe it's the, the weakest of hearing. Yeah, could be. I have not, I'm not knowledgeable <laughs> enough on bird and sheep hearing. <laughs> Nor me. I have no idea how good the hearing is for a sheep. But uh, worth, worth, I, th- I thought worth having. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so as we're sort of wrapping up the 86 portion, we have like all the... We, have, we see all the characters side by side where it shows you shows you Ennis, you know, 86, then Ennis present day with the letter, and it goes through all the characters and it shows you I'm, who they all are. I, I was actually not that big a fan of the side by side framing of this. Oh, really? I felt a little, I f- it felt a little. There was one moment which we'll get to where I thought it played really nicely, but for most of these, I think it just kind of distracted me a little bit, seeing them next to each other in like the same pose pretty much for the most of them. Whereas I think I'd have almost preferred if it kind of. You know how in in this sequence where he's going to the cave, it kind of it flashes and fades in and out with the the darkness comes in and then it cuts to the next bit. I think I'd have almost preferred it if it did something like that, where it did you know showed eighty six flash out into twenty nineteen and show us them there and then go back and forth. I'm going to disagree on this. Okay, actually, it's, it's just a personal yeah, preference thing. This I actually kind of like nothing it. technically wrong with it. I think I I liked it partly because it's kind of doing what the opening title sequence does it's kind of using know, that the in the show that. yeah um and i i think i like it because i'm assuming it's going to be a consistent thing that we do from time to time where we're yeah. going to see both no, timelines at the same time uh and i think it may lead to some interesting moments uh, later and if we're going this whole idea of the cycle right yeah then the idea that they're both kind of mirroring each other in both timelines doing similar things i could see that, that i get it effective. i just thought the, the to me personally the actual image of it felt a little bit jarring and out of place but so, it's, not, it's not a deal breaker. So we have that, and we actually we end on Ulrich in present day, and he's like, screw this, and he, he goes back to the caves, with the, he gets a big pipe or whatever, and he's trying to like break this, open... This sequence where he goes down yeah. to the cave is one of the most stylistically shot sequences, yeah. and I love it's paced so excellently. Oh, it's really good, because it's, it's intercutting with... Uh, with uh, Mik- Mikkel going back to... Because basically he finally has the idea to go back to the cave and see if he can get back. Yeah, which is why like, you know I was saying with the other side by side, I think I preferred taking this this angle where it flashes between them. Yeah, well, it I does, preferred it, this. It does it first. Eventually, it does the side by side as well. It does, and I like I do like that moment. That's the one moment of it I really like with the side by side. When they both come back out of the cave and uh, they're sitting on opposite sides, so it's very mirror image. I actually, do what I really liked, I liked it because it was an equal shot on both sides, and it cut into a close up of Mikkel, but it didn't do it in the other side for Ulrich. 
until maybe like three or four seconds later and then it did it. I actually kind of liked that because it was like they're out of sync. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little thematic little touch there. I kind of like that. Um, but while, while in the cave, uh, Mikel's got like a, he's still a lighter from uh, from Egon and he's, 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 you know, holding it up and he's trying to find his way through. And he starts screaming because he hears the bang. He hears the bang of like, of Yulvik trying to open the door. And yeah. he starts shouting for help, help. And then Ulrich hears him. And it's like, well, this is interesting. And I didn't for a second think he was going to find them because it's episode That's three. too easy, yeah. yeah. But I thought, well, this is interesting that you can hear things through the bridge. You can actually... And it, it makes me question, you know, at the end of episode one, when they started running away from the cave because they heard things. Was that the other what side? Was, what, yeah, yeah, what was going on on the other side? Who was there? What were they doing? Hmm. Oh. Yeah, was that maybe? I mean, I, I mean, I think the uh, you know the old guy, <laughs> Peter's grandfather, who runs the plant. Uh, yes. I think. I mean, I think he's been in that wheelchair for a long time. But just for the sake of speculation, do we think that maybe that was the accident that put him in a chair, and that's why he has to leave because he caused some disaster? Okay. Down in the tunnels where they're, they're dumping all this waste, and it, it didn't look like there'd been an accident recently, admittedly. But just yeah, yeah, just, no. just a thought. I know. Uh. I'm not sure what it was, but I just like that something yeah. I think must have been going on the other side. Uh, something loud enough to come right outside the cave, because obviously they're both in the cave. He's yelling, he's banging, and they can they can kind of hear each other. And yeah. I get the feeling like obviously the banging was louder, and that Mikkel's shouting like Yorick didn't hear it clearly. Like, he thought he heard it, but he, it, it was like it was subtle enough that he thought maybe he's just hearing yeah. what he wants to hear or something like that. Because uh, he, he does go off kind of looking, but they eventually both come out, outside their caves. Uh, mm-hmm. And Mikel gets hurt as well. He actually hurts his leg. He falls down at one point. And we have that great mirror image on both sides. Um, we should also, before we go to the last final moment, we should also mention all the birds. Uh, Egon's out looking. Uh, yeah, he's in the, the sheep field again, yeah, I think. And the birds start raining down, and he has to like, run back to his car and hide. Because <laughs> those birds like hit them in the head. Uh, yeah, and I was thinking, is it happening again? Is someone else coming through now? Or is it happening because they two are close to the bridge? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. no rain this time. By the way, you know, you you were speculating before the the oh, really sure, heavy yeah. rain, and we was like, okay, so not not rain is a pattern, but the birds definitely. But like I say, I'm wondering, is it is it okay when this starts to get maybe maybe when it's active because people are around it and you know it's got some interaction happening. That's when the field happens and it hits the birds. Uh, ass- assuming that's what causes it. Yeah. Assuming that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, obviously we'll find out going forward but um, so the last final moment though is we go, we go to a mysterious person building something and it becomes apparent that it's the it's the time device that the stranger has in present day uh, yeah. the, whoever this person is because I'm pretty sure we've not seen him before he, I think he's a completely new face I think so yeah uh, presumably N86 uh, building I mean there's time travel involved so it doesn't have to be but I'm just going to assume for now it is uh, he's building this this device with all the mechanical parts to it and stuff, yeah, uh, and we kind of end on that. But no, I, I I'm enjoying the, the the teasing and again, as much as it was confusing, try to piece all these names together and like t- t- talk through all the connections. It was actually really easy to watch in the episode itself. Yeah, and uh, like, I can't stress that enough. And it's why it gets more credit than I realized when I was watching it because yeah. it was good when I was watching it, but when I realized just how much it's juggling how complicated this actually is and it it never lets you feel lost it's that's a, a real credit to it yeah so i'm just just to wrap up before we go i want to just run down the families again for folks at home if you're, if you're also trying to figure it out <laughs> assuming you're watching this as you're watching as well you may have just binged the whole thing and then you're just watching us do this as, as and we then you're through. laughing because you've got your head around it already yeah so we have four main families we have the the canvald family and that is uh, Michael who killed himself, Hannah, his wife, their son, Jonas, and then, of course, Ennis the, being the, the grandmother of the family, right? Yes. Simple. We have the Nielsen family, which is Ulrich, police officer, his wife, Katharina, I got that right for the first time in the entire video, uh, who's the, the school principal. Yeah. We have the three kids. Uh, we have Magnus, Martha, and Mikkel. Mikkel being the one who's time displaced, Magnus being the older brother, Martha obviously being the sister. Uh, you have... Uh, you have Tronti Nielsen, who is the the father who who was cheating on yes uh, Ulrich's father Ulrich's father yes uh, so you know, so we'll call him the grandfather yes grandfather yeah uh, who, who's also been the one sneaking out at night when he had the blood on the uh, the sleeve he's the one who's been sneaking out and 
uh, on his wife yes. in present day, uh, who's Jana Nielsen, right? That's the Nielsens. The Doppler family, we have Peter, who's a psychiatrist, his wife Charlotte, who's the police officer. Uh, we have their daughter, Francesca, that's a weird name. Uh, but then, of course, uh, I, I think we've not actually met their, their kids yet, because they've got two kids. And I'm, I'm... Francisca, I think, is the uh, you know the I think she might be the the girl that the ginger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, was, I, I was trying to find a, an actual <laughs> character trait rather yes. than just going that. But yeah, yeah. The, 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 the ginger who seems to be into Magnus. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think that's her. And she's got a little sister as well, probably. But I don't think we've met her yet. Um, and then of course you have Peter's father, who's got dementia in present day, and he worked at the plant in '86. And then Peter's father. Uh, or Peter's no, grandfather, Peter's grandfather. Rather, who, so the great grandfather of the yes, family at this point, who ran the plant, who was the founder of the plant, uh, yes. and he's the one in the wheelchair who's passing it on. And then the final main family is the Tiedemann family, which is Regina, who owns a hotel. You have Bartos, her son. You have Claudia, her mother, who was the first woman to run the uh, plant, and you have Egon, her grandfather, who's the police officer in uh, 1986. And that's all the main people. Uh, that, we'll leave it there. But I think that's a rundown of the entire... I think we've, I think we've got it, yeah. We, 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 we've got this, right? <sighs> <laughs> well, see, that's all fine when you're doing it sequentially like that. But see, when you start to connect them, it's like, okay, this one's having an affair with this one. And this yeah, one's that's kind when of... it gets complicated. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, so... Yeah. Sorry, sorry about the mess. Oh, I, yeah, that first 10 minutes was dire. I apologise. Uh but hopefully, hopefully we've got these nailed. Hopefully we're, we're, we've got these nailed. So that is episode f- three of Dark. Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> Time travel. I've already done four in my head. I already know what's going to happen. We've already talked about it. All right, fine. Well, don't ruin it for me. I'm a doctor in Manhattan. Everything's happen, happening at the same time. Uh, that's just basically what's going on in this show. Uh, but is it? <laughs> but, uh, to to a to a, an extent of the thirty three year cycle, well, they are happening at the same. They're running parallel from our point of view. Well, we'll see if uh, Ulrich or Katharina end up having any memories of this weird kid who showed up that one day or anything like that. Yeah, but no, interesting. Now, what I do like that we, we maybe that whole Mikkel's Michael theory. I'm kind of liking that right now. Do, do you know what I find really amusing is okay. So if Mikkel's Michael. When he dies, Ulrich comes in and replaces him. You know, in in, in that family, almost. You know, he comes in. Oh. He's like, oh, he, he, so he's replacing his own son instead of the son replacing the father, which is you know the traditional thing that you see on TV. And that means Hannah's had sex with both the father and the son. Yeah, something <laughs> to think about. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it now. Somehow everything in this show is incest. They're all they're all going back to the same this, two people. This is actually Game of Thrones in disguise. <laughs> but better, obviously. Yep. Too early to say. Anyway, that's episode three of Dark. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that wasn't too much of a shambles to sit through. Uh, and I think we got better as we went along. But uh, let us know what you thought of the episode in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash TV. There'll be a link to that in the description, as well as the corner of the video. Uh, other useful links down there as well. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching. Keep watching TV. Uh, and try not stay in the dark too long. Uh, I'll tell you that, this show's making me feel like I'm in, in the dark a lot. Like, like, I'm really trying to figure out where the light switch is. Yeah. Just to put the yeah. whole thing in a metaphor, but there you go. Thanks for watching, guys, once again, and we'll see you next time. Have you got any vanilla? Mm-hmm.